was during the year 73 BC that a group of just over 70 gladiators hatched a daring plan to escape from their captivity in the city of Capua, just south along the Appian Way from Rome. Their leader was Spartacus, probably a recently enslaved Thracian nobleman, and over the next two years his elite cadre of gladiators would grow into an army of over 120,000. The revolt would descend into a prolonged conflict which would rock the entire Roman world to its core. Little is known of Spartacus's life as a free man, besides that he was probably a Thracian from modern day Bulgaria, and possibly a Roman mercenary enslaved after deserting. The Roman state at the time was an incredibly unequal one, and built upon the backs of slaves, with around one third of the population living in servitude to their Roman masters. Generally these were household slaves, often born into servitude or taken as children so they knew little else. Gladiators, however, were the exception to the rule. Generally the best warriors that money could buy. If chosen to be a gladiator, a man would be kept in far better conditions than other slaves, but they would be forced to fight other gladiators in the arena for the enjoyment of the Roman masses. This knowledge that they would eventually be forced to kill each other likely prevented strong bonds from forming between them. In 73 BC, however, Spartacus, along with several other influential gladiators, mostly Gauls and Germans, captured during the recent Roman conquests there, persuaded their fellow captives into joining them in escape. Using kitchen utensils and their bare hands, they killed the guards and made their way out of their gladiator school to freedom. But it wasn't to be that simple. Capua is in southern Italy, and the group had a long way to go to escape. They moved from villa to villa, from town to Ludus, freeing slaves as they went, eventually swelling their numbers to tens of thousands. Spartacus must have known about the previous slave revolts which had failed and been brutally suppressed in Sicily in recent years, and had no intention of allowing this rebellion to end in the same way. As it happened, the revolt could not have come at a better time, as the best Roman troops were away abroad fighting in foreign wars. The Romans were panicked, and gradually came to the realisation that this was no minor rebellion. They had a revolution on their hands. Many of the gladiators, who had only very recently been taken as slaves, had the impact of inspiring more Romanized, lifelong slaves into action. They made for Pompeii, where they set up a strong defensible position on the mountain of Vesuvius. They weren't just slaves anymore, but also Latin people from the rest of Italy, second class citizens to the Romans who had long been mistreated and subjugated by oppressive Roman rule. When the Roman forces, consisting of around 3,000 men, arrived to tackle the revolt, which was still seen as a relatively local and small affair at the time, Spartacus's forces had an excellent vantage point over the plains around them. An expert tactician, Spartacus abseiled his entire army down the sheer cliff face of the mountain using makeshift ropes, and encircled the Romans, wiping them out entirely. The next army to arrive was double the size of the last one, but it was wiped out all the same. Spartacus's army then moved south, growing ever more numerous as they liberated more and more slaves. Unlike the Romans, Spartacus split the spoils of victory equally amongst his followers, and he became incredibly popular for it. At the ancient Greek city of Metapontum on the southeastern coast of Italy, they made their winter quarters and turned tens of thousands of slaves with no prior knowledge of warfare into semi-professional soldiers. They made weapons and armour to add to the equipment looted from battle, and they tried their best to become a professional fighting force. It was the gladiator's skill with the short Roman sword known as a gladius, which gave them their name, and now they attempted to pass this knowledge on to the other slaves. The army was multinational, and as such Spartacus had a difficult time keeping them all together, which he did through his own sheer charismatic force of will. At this point in 72 BC, many of the Gauls and Germans under their leader Crixus are said to have preferred to plunder rather than to escape from Italy, as many of the others wanted. And soon, 20,000 of them split off under Crixus. They marched north, but they were promptly surrounded and massacred at Garganus. Spartacus, angered and horrified by the news, then famously ordered hundreds of Romans captured in battle to fight to the death in a cruel mockery of gladiatorial combat and in honour of his fallen comrade. More and more slaves flocked to them as they marched north towards freedom. 
Ahead of them to the north, however, two battle-hardened legions under Gaius Cassius, consisting of 10,000 men, had returned from the northern frontier. At Mutina, the slaves fought a pitched battle against their enemy, and remarkably, they triumphed. Later, however, when faced with the Alps and freedom, they no longer wanted to go home. They chose to march back south instead, to bring down Rome once and for all, rather than go back to the barbarian world which they had once known. It was at this stage that Marcus Licinius Crassus, the richest man in Rome, stepped up to protect his city. At first his army retreated, but Crassus famously implemented the policy of decimation, an ancient practice not used for centuries. Every tenth man of his army was chosen at random and beaten to death by the other nine. In this way, he forced his men to fear him more than Spartacus. The tactic worked, and Crassus gradually began to gain the upper hand. Spartacus, now trapped in southern Italy, attempted to make a break for Sicily, but he was betrayed by the pirates who had offered him passage. Now hemmed in not only by Crassus, but also by the returning generals Pompey and Lucullus, Spartacus made his final stand. He cut down swathes of centurions as he tried in vain to get to Crassus, before finally he was cut down by his guards. In the aftermath of the battle, all of the surviving 6,000 captives from Spartacus's army were crucified along the Appian Way as a staunch reminder of the price of defiance. There would never again be a major Roman slave revolt, but the legacy of Spartacus would remain as a powerful symbol of rich against poor and slave against master well into the modern world. Thank you.